So we've got a whole bunch of rivets to make. Um, these rivets went pretty quick on the mid ring and you might remember that when we put them on they were glued to any vertical surface but on these top wedges and bottom wedges that make up the shell of our spaceship none of those are vertical and so what we need to do is make a new rivet but we don't have to start from scratch so I'm just gonna move down here a little bit so the spaceship doesn't get in the way and I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the mid ring rivets and pop it right there and I'm gonna need to zoom in on it and I'm just gonna take this and explode it so now this is just a whole bunch of different line segments and faces it is no longer a rivet it's just a shape but we're gonna make it a component once we're done diddling around with it here so let's see here so I'm gonna zoom in some and I'm going to orbit around a little bit because I've been practicing and I know that the back side of the mid ring rivet does not have a face on it. Not that we need a face, it's just extra geometry, although if you're 3D printing you'd want a face to make sure that this is a solid. But I can quickly make it a solid by just drawing a line from one vertice to the next and then I'm going to erase it and then I'm going to take my select tool and grab it here and now I'm going to make it a component and I'm just going to call this um, wedge rivet we only need one and I'm going to set it so that it'll glue to any surface and I'll click OK okay I got interrupted there for just a second but what I think I was talking about was that we need to change the axes on this so I'm going to double click on this component now our wedge rivet what you'll notice is that the red and green axes which should represent the ground they should be in the same plane as the base of the rivet right in here so this face. So let's just go ahead and move that. So come over into our axis tool and actually before I do that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and make this really simple. I'm just going to kind of move to the center. It doesn't need to be the exact center and I'm going to draw a line along the green axis and I'm going to draw a line along I think well it's, it's showing me the blue axis there we go so we've got a couple of lines there and so now we're going to move the axes and those two line segments that I just drew are going to help us out so the first thing it asks us down in the lower left corner of our screen is to pick a point of the origin so we're going to pick about right there then it asks us for a point along the red axes doesn't really matter which of these you choose well actually it does matter so I'm going to go ahead and pick this one right here. Then it asks us for a point on the blue axes. And so I'll just come down along here. And that worked out. See how the blue axes now points right out the top of the rivet. I missed it just a little bit, but that's going to be plenty close enough. Now, if your blue axis instead extends away from the bottom of the rivet, then just go back and move the axes and choose one of your you know what the other line segment first and and then pick the second one but that is perfect so when I click outside to close the component it asks me if I want to update the axes and I say yes so now I can open the component back up and I can erase these two line segments I don't need them anymore. Just want to make sure they don't show up on the model somehow. So there's our wedge rivet. I'm just going to take this one and delete it. And I'm going to start to work with the wedges. So this wedge right here is just a top wedge. This one's just a top wedge. This one right here though is unique. This is um, the top wedge with the window and this one over here is the top wedge with the door and the reason that I did that was because 
we're going to have to rivet those individually. But let's just go ahead and add some rivets. So what I'm going to do here, let's see here, I'll just hit escape, is I'm going to bring in a top wedge, just another one, and I'm going to orbit around so that I can see it. I'm going to double click to open it up and then I'm going to right click right here and align the view so I'm looking directly at it. Now I could just take and click on a wedge rivet here and bring it out and glue it to this face. And I could do it again and glue this one to this face and then just work my way up. But I want to be just a little bit more precise than that. Just going to hold down the shift key and grab all of these edges. Might be a little hard for you to see on the screen because you're zoomed out a little bit. But as I select each of those, they're turning blue. Then I'm going to type M for move. I'm going to grab this corner right down here. And as I start to move it, it goofs up my wedge. But if I tap my option key, it makes a copy of it. And I'm just going to move it over four inches. So that just gives me a line that goes up there. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to take my wedge rivet. And I'm going to glue it to that midpoint. Take a wedge rivet here and uh, grab that arc midpoint, whoops, there we go, grab another wedge rivet, let's see here, I, I goofed up my, um, there we go, so now I'm aligned, wedge rivet here, just stick it on that midpoint, another wedge, wedge rivet, I'm gonna pan down, and it'll just go ahead and snap. Now this is a little bit tedious, but it's not awful. And I'm going to show you here why there's a method to my madness. Okay, I had to reload my model here because I lost the ability to zoom with my mouse. So let's come back in here and just add these last few wedge rivets to the midpoints. And you can decide if you want to put one up there on the top. But here's what's happening. As I am editing this component right here, the top wedge, if I do a zoom extents so that we can see the rocket ship, you'll see that it put all those rivets up that side. And that's because when you edit or double click on a component and open it up for editing, anything you do to one component changes all the others. Now, as we zoom around, it didn't do it on this, you know, on the one with the window, and it did not do it on the one with the doors. So I'm just gonna go in separately and, and add those rivets and I'm not going to extend this video too long. You don't need to watch me add every single rivet. But what I am going to do here is use my eraser tool to erase these edges that I copied and moved over because we don't want those to be there. And if you're watching down in the lower right portion of your screen, I'll zoom out here just a little bit. You'll see that they're disappearing from all of those other components. So that just saves us a whole bunch of time. So at this particular point in the screencast, I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same 
steps over on the right and then we'll talk about going ahead and adding some rivets either to the bottom or to the parts that have the door and the window. So I've gone ahead now and added rivets going up both sides and I closed outside which updated the component which we call the top wedge and now I can just go ahead and delete it and everything stays because that was just an extra component so to do the bottom wedges it's the exact same process I'm just going to go ahead and pull out a bottom wedge I'm going to zoom in double click to open it up for editing there we go and then select these edges here by holding down my shift key Oh, accident, oh, accidentally, accidentally right click there, which deselected everything. So we'll just jump up here again. And then M for move. Grab this lower corner, tap my option key, move it over four inches, hit enter. And with that in place now, I can go ahead and grab, let's see. There we go, grab my wedge rivet, put one there, 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 there. It's really nice because it snaps to these midpoints. Of course, you can add all the rivets you want, but they are all flush because we move the the coordinates on it there. And why am I not seeing that? Oh, you know what I did? I stuck them on there, but I did not have, it must have clicked outside. So now I need to double click and open it up and put them back. See, I closed the component. Because I closed the component, it didn't update all the wedges. I'm just working with this single piece out here Let's see if this is working. Yeah, they're going in down below. So I'll just finish these up here. Oh, must, must have misclicked. There we go. And now you can see that they're all placed in there so I need to come in now and delete those line segments and because we don't have any special wedges on the bottom it's going ahead and filling them all in so I'm just going to go ahead and pause here and place the rest of them and I'll be back in just a second so I have my rivets now placed on both sides and I went through and deleted those line segments so now I can take and just click anywhere outside the component to close it and then I can take this component right here and just go ahead and delete it and now when I do a zoom extents but we've now got a real nice layout of rivets although right here I missed a line segment didn't I not a big deal so I'm just going to double click to edit this one component which is the same as all components I'll delete it and it disappears so I'll just click outside and we now have a riveted spaceship except for the fins and I'll do those next with just a little different twist so to put the rivets on the fins I'm going to sort of choose the same workflow that I chose before. I'm just going to grab a fin and put it out here anywhere. And then I'll take and double click on it to open it up for editing. Right click and align the view. And so now whatever I do to this fin, because it's not unique, is going to update the three fins on my rocket ship. I'll type in F for offset. Grab this, pull this in about four inches, and hit enter. And then 
using the same wedge rivet as before. I'll come in here and just going to go ahead and place just a few rivets. I'm not going to place them all because that makes this screencast just a little bit long. But I want to show you the process. We'll come down a touch. Pull maybe about there and about there. And let's see, let's come down. Yeah, I'm probably going to get most of them. So I'll put one there and I think I'll put one about there. Of course, if you want to move any particular rivet, you can just type in M for move, click along the face and you can kind of scoot it along and get things centered just the way you want. So with that in place, I'm now going to take and with my select tool, actually I'm going to take and erase this offset line, which I don't really need anymore. Because I have my rivets placed. And so now with my select tool, and while holding down the shift key, I'll select these particular rivets. And there we go. So now I'm going to use my keyboard to copy them. And then I'll zoom out here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something different here. They're still selected. So instead of copying them, I'm gonna type in M for move. I'm gonna click anywhere I'm going to move them along the green axes. I'm going to have to use my arrow keys. There we go. So there's the green axes right there. I'm going to tap my option key to make a copy. So I want to keep the original rivets. And I'm just going to click. So I've got my original rivets and I've got those. So now I'm going to take those rivets that are selected. I'm going to type in S for scale. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to grab this grip on the left. I'm going to pull it the opposite direction and type in a negative one and hit enter. So now I just turn them around and now M for move. I'll pick a point anywhere and move them along the green axes. Let's see here. Well, I shouldn't have picked anywhere, but I can do this twice. Just kind of make sure I move them along the green axes. And then now I'm going to again move them here. I'm going to grab that corner and move them along the green axes until it intersects with the face the outside there we go on face click so I've got rivets on one side I've got rivets on the other side when I close outside now when I come and look at my rocket ship I've got rivets on both sides So now I can just go ahead and take this component, thin component that I brought out and just go ahead and delete it. And if I decide I want to move any of these rivets or add an extra rivet, I can go ahead and open up the component and be good to go. Now we couldn't take and put the same pattern of rivets on the window and the door section because like right in here if I was to copy this rivet four inches over this way it would hit the door frame. However here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and grab this wedge right here 
and I'm going to, while holding down my shift key, grab all of these rivets here. And I'll come down the other side. I'm going to choose Q for rotate. I'm going to come right up here on the very top. And I'm going to come out along the red axis. And I'm going to start to rotate those rivets. I'm going to type in Q. to copy them and I'm going to come around exactly 40 degrees so I'll type in 40 and hit enter and I've now got rivets here what I can do is just let's see a click outside click double click here click on that rivet and delete it Click on that one, delete it. And that looks pretty good. I mean, I guess I could add one in here, but it's probably not really necessary. And then it made the same changes over here. So I'll click outside and I've got rivets along there. I don't have one here, but you can just go in and add those if you want. That rivet's okay, that rivet's okay. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and call that good. I think we're completely done with the rivets. And now we can go ahead and move on to what I think is some really fun stuff. So I got a little bit ahead of myself there. I forgot that I haven't put the rivets around the porthole yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open up that wedge and then I'm going to right click and let's see, I got too much selected there. Double click again. Then I'm just going to click that face and then I'm going to line the view and then I'm going to zoom in and just grab a wedge rivet and say, put it right there. Now it's a little too big. So I'll type in S for scale and I need to kind of orbit around here just a little bit to shrink it down. So I'll grab that top grip and just kind of eyeball it there and go back to my select tool, right click, align the view again so I'm looking directly at it. Select the rivet M for move. Just kind of nudge it over into place. If you zoom in, it won't snap around all over the place. So we've got one there. We don't want to, want to do that a couple dozen more times. So I'm going to type in Q for rotate with the rivet selected. So I'm trying to rotate this around. I type in Q for rotate. Uh, I can come over and pause near the edge of the circle. Oops, didn't mean to click there. But as I mouse around, the center um, of the circle, the snap, does not show up. So to find it, I'm going to just do some simple geometric construction here. I'm going to go to the midpoint of that edge. And as I click and move across the circle, if I get that magenta inference line there, it tells me that I am perpendicular to that edge. So I'll click there, hit escape. I'll come down to any other edge, start at its midpoint. And where those two lines intersect is the center of my circle. So now with Revit selected Q for rotate, I will tap my arrow keys and then I'll come out here and just click and I'll move it, let's say 10 degrees. No, let's say 20 degrees. Oh, forgot to tap my option key though. There we go. Now I'll type in 20, oh, but I accidentally hit 15. So now I'll just type in 20 and it'll move it for me. And then without doing anything else, again, here we're gonna use some math, 360 divided by 20, it goes in 18 times. So I type in that I want 17 more of these. 
So 17x, hit return, and there is our circular rivet pattern. And now we can come in and erase these line segments or construction lines that we don't need. And when we click outside to close the component for editing, we have our porthole with the rivets, which I think really helps with the look. Let's do the door decks. It won't take long. So I have two rows of rivets that I want to go ahead and put on here, one along this inner face and then this one here along this outer face. I'll go ahead and select my door, right click on it or double click on it to open it up for editing. I'll align my view and then I'm going to go, just go ahead like I did before and put a wedge rivet right there and then I'm going to take and type in S for scale, grab one of these outer grips, just kind of move it about that size, M for move, and kind of get it centered like so. Then I am going to again type in M for move. I'm going to pick a point just about anywhere really. I'm going to move it down along the blue axis, type my option key, And I'm just kind of eyeballing here. I don't have any guidelines or anything. So I'll go ahead and place that one there. And then without touching or clicking the mouse or doing anything else, I'm just going to type in 8 divided by, hit enter. And so it makes some, some more rivets for me. Then I'm going to take and hold down, using the select key, hold down the shift key here. And select those 8 rivets. And then I'm going to type M for move, tap my option key, pick a base point on this face, and move across along the green axes. Zoom in here so we can kind of get them somewhat centered. And those rivets are done. Okay, so now to rotate the rivets around this top flange like I did before with the porthole, I know I'm going to have the same problem, so what I'm going to do is find the center of this arc by drawing a line down here, perpendicular, along the face of the door, and then I'm going to just draw another line from one of these segments, again perpendicular, then I'm going to grab a rivet right here, I'm going to type in Q for rotate, I'll click right there, click tap my option key to make a copy and I'll come around to maybe about right there and now I want to do divided by so let's just try 5 divided by hit enter it looks okay let's try 6 divided by let's try 7 divided by and that certainly looks good enough okay with the top rivets in place I'm now going to just take and select them swivel down the shift key here and then type in Q for rotate put it in my center line come out start to spin them around tap the option key to make a copy and come around 180 degrees and that selects those rivets for me so now type in M for move, there we go. Pick that point right there and pull down along the blue axes. Let's see, kind of floating around here a little bit. There we go. So quick way to take by using the copy rotate tool to put in that bottom row of rivets. So it's time now to paint Walls and Gromit's rocket ship. And as you saw in the film, they decided to paint everything orange with just a big brush. It's, it's fun to watch. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I'll come back over here into SketchUp. Type B for the paint bucket. This guy right over here. And now I need to find an orange color. So 
when you open the paintbrush tool, it's going to open the materials palette over here. So we'll click right there and we'll come into our colors and we'll just kind of scroll along here. I don't want too dark of an orange. So I'm just going to pick this one right here. And then when I come in, I can select any of the individual panels. Here's the quick way to go about it is just to grab the select tool, grab everything, click on the paint bucket tool and click anywhere on your model and it's all done. Well, not quite all done. The porthole got painted. So I'm going to double click to grab that surface, right click and align my view to it. And then shopping over here in my materials palette, instead of colors, I'm going to choose glass and mirrors. And if it has this shading, this dual shading, that's telling you that it has some opacity or that you can see through it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that one there because that's my favorite. And now I can see through the window the clouds. Oh, you know what? I need to change that, don't I? Because the moon doesn't have any clouds. So instead I'll click on this one. And now I can see through the window as I orbit around. And you can put walls and grommet inside there. You can put yourself inside there if you want. And our rocket ship is done. So I was watching a grand day out again while I was typing some stuff up and I realized that I forgot to include the bottom of the rocket ship. That's really easy to do though. So let's just go ahead and take care of that. Whoop, there we go. So we'll just spin her around like so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my line tool because this is all grouped together. So I'm going to draw the bottom independent, you know, as if there's an invisible thin layer of plastic between the bottom of the rocket ship and the sides of the rocket ship. So I'll just go ahead and type in L. And I'll just start to make my way around each time pausing to make sure that I am indeed on that bottom intersection of the wedge. See where I'm at here. Okay, so go to this vertice, and then I'm just going to jump down to this one. And then I'm going to zoom out and come up to this one so I can see where I am so far. And I'm going to right click and align the view. And now I'm going to finish drawing these line segments. So it'll be much easier now. And now this should close the face. Oh, I must have missed one somewhere. There we go. And then finally these two from there to there to there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and erase this and this. And again, use my select tool, right click to align the view so I can see the whole thing. I'm just going to draw a line across the bottom so that I can easily find the center of this and then C for circle. So I'll draw the hole for where the fire comes out and then I'm going to take and well, let's see, I'll just do one more circle here out like so and then I'll take and use my push pull tool. I'll orbit this around a little bit so that I have, actually I'll select this and this and then P for push pull. Well, I'll just pull that one out just a little. Double click on this one to pull it out the same amount. And now I can erase that segment and that segment. And actually I can erase this face here and this face here, but I'm going to leave that line in place. So let's go ahead now and put a wedge rivet. Let's see, I want to align my face again or my view so that I can be a little more precise. So I'll put a wedge rivet 
on this face, say right there. And I'll put another wedge rivet there. And I'll put one there. And maybe one about right there. Don't make everything so it's quite so uniform. So now these are rivets, as you can see, are on different faces. These three are on the this face, and these three are on this ring. So that's not going to be a problem because what I'm going to do using my space bar to select or to activate the select tool, I'm going to select those four rivets and then Q for rotate and I'm going to put the center right there in the middle of that line segment. Then I'm going to come out along here along this face. I'll click once. I'll start to move it tap my option key and uh, let's see this rivet here on the outside this one right out here is going to be outside the edge so I'm going to hit escape deselect everything click on this rivet M for move and move it in a little bit and select this one M for move click on it slide in a little bit and now I'll go back and see what that looks like then Q for rotate, put it right in the center, come out along this face, start to move it, tap your option key, tap in 20 degrees, and then 20 goes into 360 18 times, so I need 17 more copies, so I type in 17x, I hit return, and now all we need to do is take and paint it, so I will now choose the eyedropper tool. It's a quick way that I can grab this orange. When I click on it and take a sample, it changes into the paint bucket tool. And so now I can come in and start to paint some of this. A quicker way to do it is to triple click on it, paint bucket tool, click once, and now everything is orange. And at this point, the actual rocket ship, I think, is done. Although there's lots of fun things and modifications that we can make for it. I might do one more thing after this. We'll just see if I have time. But for now, we'll just do a quick inspection here. We'll come into this view. We'll do a zoom extents as we come in. And we can orbit around and take a look at our good work. including that fine bottom that we just made. Yeah, looks good. So I'll stop right there for now, and maybe I'll add one more chapter. Again, we'll just see if we have time. Okay, just one more thing I promise. I want to take and show you how you can take your rocket ship and set it into a scene, whether it's on the moon or whether it's in your front yard, uh, whatever you want. So what I did, a few steps involved. I went ahead and just looked for moon landscape. I liked this picture right here. I thought the rocket ship would look good on it. So I just right clicked and saved the image as um, moonscape. So just go ahead and save that, replace it. You see I've already been practicing. And then now I need to export my rocket ship. And so to do that, come up here where this little folder is and choose to export it as a PNG file. PNG file is just like a JPEG file, except that it has an extra layer of transparency, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And my rocket ship, because I'm using a 4K monitor, I've got a pretty big picture here. So I'm going to reduce this up oh, before I do that got to click the little link over here to keep everything proportional and I'm just going to go ahead and make this 1280 which is probably what your laptop's working on and when I click outside it changed the height dimension down here to 548 and then it's kind of cool in this preview that you can take and orbit around if you want to Get it just kind of the way you think it needs to look. I'll pan down here just a little bit. And there's one thing that I forgot to do. See those axes? I don't want those. So I gotta cancel. 
I've got to come back and click on the little glasses here and I have to turn the axes off. Now they're still there. You can turn them back on if you want to go back and do some work, but we don't want them there. So now we're going to export the PNG. Click on the little chain link. Make this 1280. Just click outside to change the height. And then I'm going to choose a transparent background and export it as a PNG. And then ask me where I want to save it. So I'll just go ahead and put it back here, replace my practice piece. And so now we've got two files. We've got our Moonscape file and we have our, uh, our SketchUp image. So now I'm going to come in to, let's see, I'll click on here and I'm going to Google Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R. And go to the Pixlr editor. Let's see, I turn my uh, keystroke function back on there. And so I'll go to Pixlr editor and this Pixlr editor right now requires Flash. And Flash is pretty handy, but Google's shutting it off for Chrome here in another few months. So we're going to go ahead and try the new editor beta, which to me looks like it's pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and open an image. And I'm going to open my Moonscape first. And so there it is there. It's in its own layer over here. And so what I want to do now is add a new layer and import my other image, which is my rocket ship. And it puts it on top. And so you can kind of move that around. You know that transparency that I was talking about? Well, you see there are, if you have white in this background, it's probably because it's a JPEG, but PNG files do support this transparency, which is pretty cool. So I can just click outside there. If I later on want to take and change it, I can move back and forth between my layers. Now, one thing that I want to do though, is I want to get rid of this SketchUp logo. And so let's do that. Um, Let's go ahead and double click on the little lock here. That'll unlock that layer. And then I can uncheck the box and it turns it off. Then I'll select my rocket ship layer, grab my eraser over here. The people from SketchUp probably wouldn't appreciate me doing this, but it does kind of muck up the whole picture. You can bring this back. Um, you can add yourself, you can add Wallace and Gromit, uh, whatever you want. And then when you're all done, file, save, and you can see there's a JPEG, which will take and compress the two layers together into one layer, a PNG file, which will support the transparency, although that doesn't really matter anymore, or a PXD file, which is Pixlr's native format that allows you to save it. I suggest doing both JPEG and PNG and also the PXD file. Call it whatever you want, click on download, and it should download it to your computer, and you can name it whatever you want, and you should be in great shape. Now, I know I've promised you at least twice that I was gonna stop, but I got this idea that I thought would be pretty cool, and one that you could apply to your SketchUp model as well. So I found this picture of Walden Gromit, and what I really like about this image, you'll see why in a second, is that there's a stark white background. So I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and save this image. Let's see, I need to put it in my Walls and Gromit folder, and I'll just call it WNG for Walls and Gromit. It doesn't matter what you call it or where you save it as long as you can find it. And then I'm going to come into Pixlr Photo Editor here. I'm going to create a new image. Actually, I'll open an image. And I'll go back into my Wallace and Gromit rocket ship. I'm going to open this image up. And so now I've got this available for editing. And notice that it gets dropped by default in the background layer. So I'm just going to double click to turn that off so that it's unlocked. So I'll go ahead and select the Wand Select tool. And the default tolerance is 32. 
and so when I click on the white area here it doesn't select it it just kind of selects this and every image is going to be different so I'll come up to edit and deselect and then I'm going to turn my tolerance down oh this is kind of a guess and check thing here but I'll just change it to 10 and then I'm going to try one more time to click out here in the white area and now I've got a nice crisp selection set around Wallace and Gromit but I don't have this spot here in the tail so I'm going to hold down the shift key and add that add this spot right here and add this spot right here between his legs so with Wallace and Gromit now selected I'm going to grab my eraser tool here I'm going to turn up the size of it make it quite large softness doesn't matter a whole bunch but I'm gonna turn that all the way down so I have a nice sharp edge and then I'm going to come over here and erase all of those pixels. And when you see that checkerboard background, that means that you've got some transparency there. You no longer have that white background. So now I'm going to take and let's see here. I, I need to save it. And I want to save it as a PNG. That way, you know, if you save it as a JPEG, what you're going to get is this is all going to be white because JPEGs don't support a transparent layer. So make sure you save it as a PNG. It doesn't matter what you call it. doesn't matter where you put it. This as long as you can find it. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. It's going to go in my Waltz and Gromit folder. And this is going to be a PNG, so it won't overwrite the other file. And we'll go ahead and close that. And now we're going to move into SketchUp. So I've got my rocket ship now, and I want to put Waltz and Gromit in. But before I do that, if I come in and take a look at this, let's see, take a look at a side view here. You'll remember that our axes went right through the middle when we, back when we began in the very, very beginning. So I'm just going to take my spaceship here, select it all, type in M for move, and click and move it straight up along the blue axis until it looks like it's pretty much touching the ground. So it doesn't look much different other than the axes are now down below there. Now I'm going to open up a brand new SketchUp file so I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this tab and I'll go ahead and create a new template in feet and inches and I'm just going to leave Helen there for right now and I'm going to bring in that PNG file so I'll choose insert from my computer and there's my Wallace and Gromit PNG and so I am going to insert it as an image and so it comes in a little bit slow and I'm just going to go ahead and click and set it on the ground if you will and then I'm just going to scale it doesn't really matter how much because I'm going to make them the proper height here in just a moment so now he's placed flat on the ground, both Wallace and Gromit. I'm going to type in Q for rotate, come down to vertices, use my arrow keys, and I'll click here, and I'll pull them up to where it reads 90 degrees, and I'll click OK. So with Wallace and Gromit in place, let's go ahead and find out how tall they are. So I'll click right here, type in T for tape measure, and just click from that vertice up to that vertice. He's about 14 feet. And I want it to be about, oh, maybe uh, 68 inches tall. So I'll type in 68. I'll hit return. And I get this pop-up that asks me if I want to resize the model. And that's why I did it. So I'll click OK. And now he's about the same size as Helen. So I'm going to delete Helen. So the next thing I'll do is go ahead and explode the picture into different elements here and then I'm going to take and hide this frame just right clicking on these elements here and hiding them I tried deleting them but it, it deletes the whole image so now we've just got our image I'm gonna right click and uh, let's see here grab it all make it a component and I'll just call it uh, Wallace and Gromit. 
And then I'm also going to click and choose for it to always face the camera. So now they're a component. And no matter how I orbit about, Walsh and Gromit face the camera. Now that it's a component, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And again, it doesn't matter where you save it, as long as you can find it. And I'll just go ahead and call it WG again, and I'll overwrite that. And now I'm going to go back into my other tab here, and come up under the file, and choose to insert from my, oh, excuse me, this will be from Trimble Connect, because um, I didn't save it to my computer might be from your Google Drive but again as long as you can find it so I'll go to Trimble Connect SketchUp Walsh and Gromit folder click that and insert that file that SketchUp file as a component and I'll just go ahead and just say put them right there and now and I'll deselect them here. However I orbit around, Waltz and Gromit are right there. Always facing the camera. Now as long as we went to the work to make Waltz and Gromit for our SketchUp model as a component, let's just go ahead and bring in that PNG into Pixlr. So I'll come over and I'll just click to make a new layer. I'll choose that I want to make it as an image. There's my PNG and there they are pretty big so let's see here. Let's go to zoom and ask it to fit the screen. Hope oh, that didn't work. So let's see we got to zoom out a few times. I'll just type in uh, there we go. And then you can grab the grips here and grab your picture and see because it's a PNG you get that that transparency behind them. If, if it, Walsh and Gromit are surrounded by white it's because you saved it as a JPEG. And so now I'll zoom in here and just click somewhere else outside and I'm going to call that good.